So today I'm going to focus on verse 6, but for, for review, let's start at verse 1, and then I'll tell you why this man, this blind man, has been so significant in my life. Starting in verse 1, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And here's verse 6. Having said these things, he, he spat upon the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. I like this verse 6, that Jesus spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and anointed the man's eyes with the mud. I'd like to use this topic. Some of you will, will resonate when you hear this topic, and some of you won't get it until after a while. Uh, the topic is, here's mud in your eye. Yeah, here's mud in your eye. This man has taught me so much, this blind man, about who I am, who I have the potential to be, and how I respond to the uncertainties of life. And life is full of uncertainties. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. It does not matter how good looking you are. It doesn't matter how stable your family is. Life is full of uncertainties. And if you've never experienced something in your life that you could not predict, keep on living. And I promise you there is an uncertainty with your name on it, waiting to meet you somewhere. Life is full of uncertainties, and this blind man helps us not only manage the uncertainties, but get beyond the uncertainties and go places that we cannot see are available to us. He taught me in the first instance that if I have a problem, I don't have to shut down until the problem is resolved. There have been times in my life when the pressures have been so intense, when the problems have been so many, when the pressures just, just seem to squeeze every ounce of enthusiasm out of me when I just don't feel like it. Have you ever just not felt like it? There are times when you just don't feel like talking. There are times when you don't feel like getting dressed. There are times when you just don't feel like going to work. There are times you just don't feel like it. And when we don't feel like it, often we don't. Now, we may do it physically, but if we don't feel like going to work, we'll get up and go to work, and everything about us sends the message. Don't mess with me today. I don't really want to be here. <laughs> but there are other times when if, if we just really don't feel like it, we will literally lock ourselves in our bedrooms, shut the door, turn off the phone, and just don't want to be bothered, and we won't be bothered. But this blind man, this blind man taught me that you can have a significant challenge, but that's no reason to shut down. And he taught me that because in spite of his blindness, he got up that morning and went out. This blind man taught me not to care too much about what people think of me, even when they think the worst. Because when these people were asking Jesus, is this man a sinner? Did his parents sin when these disciples tried to get all in the blind man's business? He ignored them. He didn't even respond to them. I don't have to win every argument. In fact, since you didn't make me, you didn't wake me up, you didn't put breath in my lungs, you didn't give the blood that I use in my veins, I don't really care what you think. I'd like to be liked, but if I can't be liked, that's just tough. That's your problem, not mine. This blind man taught me that. He taught me that if, even if people around me are 
talking about me as if I'm not there. Has that ever happened to you? Folk talking about you, and you're sitting right there. You don't have to respond. The blind man taught me that when things get worse, I mean, when things hit rock bottom, there's no place to go but up. I mean, if you're really down, if you've really reached the bottom of the pit, the good news is there's no place to go but up. And he taught me that in verse 6 in ways that he did not teach me that in, in other verses. Now, I know we are 2,000 years away from this. I know we are, we are blood-washed, spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christians. But let's go back 2,000 years and just look at the reality. Here was a blind man who didn't really know who Jesus was, had no particular religious inclination that we know about. He was a blind man who had heard people talking about him. He was a blind man who was outside to beg for money. He was a blind man who, who wasn't really having a great day. And the blind man, in addition to all of his pre-existing problems, is close to a man and he hears the man spit. See, we're all sanctified and we know the end of the story. We know that Jesus made some mud and put the mud on the man's eyes. And at the end, the man said, I can now see. But let me tell you something. I don't think this blind man was too excited about hearing this spit. The fact that he was blind suggests that he had heard people spit before. Because a blind person, a beggar, a uh, seemingly nobody, someone of low status and low esteem may have been the victim of people spitting on him. 